welcome to the MBS show, episode number 243. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Greetings, bronies of the interwebs. It's time for brownie news, or as I call it, bruise. <laughs> That's new. So how have you been doing, man? 2016 is nearly done. I think I can count myself lucky to still be in one piece. Yeah, I think the insurance covered you, right, with whole princess debacle thing and whatnot. The, the, the insurance coverage, but the wounds upon my heart, they went deep. Uh, true. Deep. Well, well, I think once your castle's done, you'll be all right, right? Come on. Right. Right, that's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> yeah. And those who wants to beat you up with a broomstick, uh, well... Never mind. Uh, on this show, you're all safe now, unless the commenters have something else to say about it. Oh, we know they shall. <laughs> oh, yes. We know they shall. Well, this is something new. We don't get you um, much around the news section. Like, thank you for coming on, Silver. Oh, thank you for having me. And if you guys don't know, Silver joins me every week to review the My Little Pony IDW comics, or also the... TV series or even other random things like the last time we did was, if I remember right, Batman. Um, what was it again? The Killing Joke, was it? Oh yes, The Killing Joke, or what so you have to call it. 30 minutes that Gotham needs to relieve themselves, followed by The Killing Joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we do all those kind of things on the other show. But anywho, uh, talking about the comics, first up, we got Katie Cook coming back to the IDW comics. Wow. Yay! I'm glad she's coming back. Yeah, it feels like, what, um, been almost half a year, was it? It's been a good while. Now, now, Katie Cook had a little bit of a rough go with, uh, the good, the bad, and the ponies, and then the root of the problem. Mm -hmm. Folks came to, including myself, were very critical of that, those two, uh, parts, but I thought her farewell, her final comic with Pinky and Rarity was very well done. Yeah. And I have, Hopes but hesitations for the premise of this uh, issue. Yeah. I mean, with Katie Cook's writing, it's, I won't say hit and hit or miss. It's one of those situations where every good writer got to have their ups and downs. And Katie Cook here has her ups and downs. She excels at character-driven stories. But when they're conflict-driven, oftentimes the conflict is can be warped to fit the characters or vice versa. In fact, I'd, I'd say more often it's actually the characters who struggle to become to make the uh, conflict work. So this one uh, is okay to talk about what it, what it's going to be. Yeah, sure. It's it, how do I put this? It's not a really major spoiler. It's kind of what you might call this uh, an event, like uh, they did with the uh, villain arc. Something along those lines. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this case, in this very unique case. Uh, it's a what if story asking what would have happened if Prince Blue Blood was Celeste's prized pupil rather than Twilight Sparkle? <laughs> Which is a very odd thing to have happen. I mean, how they even managed that, I do not know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so confusing. I know. It's, uh, I don't know. Like, there's so much speculation we can go for here, but let's just wait until it comes out. And the best thing about what if stories is that, well, they're hit and miss. They're not usually on point. They usually mess around with hit cannons, but it's a what if situation. Like, what if the Punisher kills the Marvel Universe? Or what if Spider-Man joins the X-Force? Or what other what if stories are there that are really popular? I, I don't remember. But, well, uh, I can't say this past year, uh, IDW released five Divergent, uh, or is it Divergence comics? Not to be confused with the teen, uh, book series, which as far as I know is okay. But no, uh, I read the one where, in, in a world where Optimus Prime didn't die. And that one, I fear, the author clearly had some bitter feelings from the, uh, from the old Transformers movie, because he killed off the movie cast with great zeal. <laughs> Yay! I mean, super zeal. I mean, he he was like, "I'm gonna bury you all ten feet under, <laughs> uh, in a pool of rust, in a pool of rust, and, and hot rod. Everyone's gonna hate you because you got Optimus killed, you big meanie, <laughs> dumb jerk. Wow, stupid jerk, stupid jerk face jerk. <laughs> uh, I, you know what, like. 
this, this is a bit of a diversion. I <laughs> see what I did there. Uh, but aha, I, I can't wait for the part or the reveal in Transformers: Robots in Disguise where it is revealed that Optimus Prime is working with a mystery robot. Remember what he mentioned in the last ish, uh, last episode, I think episode thirteen, where he mentioned that oh, uh, I'm working with someone. I better not tell you who it is. But it's revealed to be Megatron. That would be something. Yeah, and people think, oh, Megatron is a bit bad guy. Yeah, he is. But if you notice the arc in that series, he kind of learned his lesson and kind of moved on away from the whole becoming the leader of Decepticon. And I don't know, probably the hires up at whatever source of power says that you and Optimus Prime work together. Do good stuff. That would be something. Uh they Optimus and Megatron teamed up for the less well received uh Combiner Wars. Uh, yeah, that, that that one. I don't know, I mean in Robots in Disguise they didn't really do much with them. If I remember right, they even they didn't even do much at all. Like it was here, toys, go, buy. Yep, pretty much. You know, that that was bad, but the story was fun. Megatron's a tank. Now he's a handgun. They look nothing alike. <laughs> How do you do that? Uh, physics. What is that? Exactly. Ah, uh, but I, I, I think we, we've forgotten the ponies and all oh, this. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So, I, I'm expecting this to be more comedy. I don't know if there'll be a dark twist, but I will look forward to Katie Cook's return to, uh, the comics and seeing how she's doing after a little bit of a time away. Yeah, I, I can't wait for that too. And also at the same time, this is her first time Comboing off with Garbuska. Garbuska, 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 Boska, Boska. Yeah, and it's good to see her work with someone else instead of Andy Price. You know, just to get some flavor out of the whole work dynamic. Hopefully a good one. Yeah, we'll see. Um, Andy Price and who was it? You remember the, uh, whatchamacallit, this Sombra arc? Who was the writer for that one? Oh, for the, the Siege of the Crystal Empire? Yeah. Uh, let's see here. No, uh, Jeremy Wheatley. Yeah, Jeremy Wheatley. They did two combos, so it'll be interesting to see how things work. Yes. Moving on to the other news, uh, we do a review show where we talk about the episode and the second part of season six is now on Netflix. Yay! Hey. With all mention of Cider Ixnade. That is for the UK version, I think. Oh, no, they, they've applied it to the American uh, Netflix release as well. What? Really? Yep, they censored Cider. Oh, no. What? Really? Which makes my iTunes download of the actual Cider episode as good as gold. It's so precious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what really? I, oh, you know what? My head is just... I don't know how to process this. <laughs> well, people will say, oh, but those files are just taking up room on your hard drive. Yes, but it's full of alcoholic cider. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, that's right. It's just me. I am full of the alcoholic cider. Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> but still, um, if you have a subscription to Netflix, uh, there you go. Have at it. Have fun with your non-alcoholic ponies. <laughs> I, yeah, whatever. Uh, but you know where to buy good cider is, Silver? I'm assuming at a farm. That and all. If My Little Pony hasn't lied to me at all. <laughs> Probably. But one place is Target. Yay, Target is a good huh. place to buy stuff, right? There you go. And this year, Target did a kind of a musical for their holiday promotion to say, parents buy toys at Target. <laughs> buy them, buy them, buy them. And said musical had My Little Pony and Rarity spoke. And it was Rarity's voice. It was... Pinkie Pie also squealed, but truth be told, you could fake that pretty easily. Or you could just take it from the show. But still, someone on the Twitters um, messaged Tabitha, uh, the voice of Rarity, and asked, was that really you? And she said, yes, it was her. So that's cool. I I would really like to see more ads doing this where they get the voice actor or actress for character and voice their ads. That would be so cool. Very. It was a fun one. I mean, I, I, I caught little bits of it, including the end piece where both Pinky and Rarity are just bouncing up and down. And I thought, you know what? Uh, Maud in Manhattan, in Manhattan, was it? No, no. 
Uh, but but the one where where Rarity does the Pinkie Pie impersonation. Uh, I think that could be um, main. Uh, I'm not good with the episode. It's like need the wiki in front of me. Is it made? Made in Manhattan? Probably made in Manhattan. Let me double check the wiki. But uh, go on with what you wanted to say. Basically, she can keep up the bounce alongside Pinkie Pie just fine. <laughs> yeah. She is um, very energetic. And is that a season five thing? Season six. Season six. No, made in Manhattan is the map episode. Oh, okay. What? There's the one where it's Pinky, Maud, and Rarity in Manhattan doing the sister exchange. Yeah, I'm trying to look for that now. Oh, God. I should specify sister gift exchange. Exchanging sisters would mean that <laughs> Pinky would get Sweetie Belle. <laughs> oh, no, we do not want that. Well, why not? You're the, she'd be, they'd be good together. Confusing, but good. True. Although it's funny, Sweetie was already uh, temporarily adopted by Applejack for a day. Uh, true. She liked them apples. Dem apples. How do you like dem apples? Yep. And by the way, uh, the episode is called The Gift of the Mod Pie. There we go. Took a while, but yeah. Took it. Oh, we might. A <laughs> skosh. Mm -hmm. And, well, this episode here, well, the one we're recording now, is coming a few days away for the New Year's, or before the New Year's. So, you know what would be perfect for a good kickstart to the New Year? Lots of liquor. That and also a calendar. Yes, a calendar. Especially a My Little Pony calendar. That'll be great, right? Hey, you can always count on the dates. <laughs> yes, unless they screw it up somehow. Somehow, but looking at the photos, they're vectors from the show, but they're bright and colorful and happy and have word bubbles. Yeah. So little kids will get a, a kick out of them and... Collectors will, of course, flock for them. Yeah, and also adults who just want a calendar. Like, honestly, I personally use the computer's calendar. I'm not sure about you, but still, it's one of those cool things. By the way, what do you use? Well, one, I use a day planner if I'm trying to keep tabs on multiple fronts. In fact, thank you for the reminder, I have to go get a day planner for 2017. Hey. <laughs> but more often than not, I do rely on my computer's uh, built-in calendar system. Because my day job involves helping people estimate when their orders arrive, and you have to count. I actually, <laughs> I pull up the calendar and I count the days on the screen. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Your package will arrive on. Yeah. Wow. And then they still get mad. <laughs> Why? Because customer service is. It's where people go for stress relief. <sighs> Really? Basically, they think, I'm the customer, I can treat you however I want. I am going to just unload all of life's frustrations. That's not even... Oh, man. That, that is... Uh, that sucks. Oh, it, I'm not saying it's right, but I think it's... I, it's the mentality, I think... I don't mean to bring it down, but let's... 20, 2016 stressed, I think, a certain powerlessness amongst people. We all feel like... Stuff's happening and we have no control over it. And so uh, we just find ways to vent at times. Yeah, but don't vent it out on the poor guy who's just doing his job. I mean, yeah, I think it's not fair, but still. Yeah, well, that's life. Life, the universe, and everything. True that. And by the way, this calendar, uh, it's about $16. For, for reals? Oh, that's that's pretty common for calendars. I mean, you know, you're not... It's meant to last you the whole year. Yeah, but still, I mean, I guess it's you're, worth something. I mean, I'm looking at the conversion rate now, and uh, it's not fun. You just times that by four. Actually, let's just do a quick count here, because I'm seeing Twilight gets two covers all to herself. Pinky has three. Rarity has at least two. Hang on. Does Applejack even get a month? You know what? I don't see Applejack solo. I do see Fluttershy by Spawn. Pinkie Pie has one, two, three. What is this? What is this lack of love for Applejack? And you know what? Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash only has one. Like Fluttershy, you know, Rainbow Dash is one of the best marketing tools, but they're not using her well. And Applejack? Oh uh, no! Applejack, I just see her head. 
Oh, God, they've got Applejack's decapitated head floating about. Uh, this... I am the ghost of Pony's past, y'all. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, that's what happened when you mess with the Don. But talking about <laughs> decapitation. Oh, God. Decapitation! Uh, Deadpool vs. Pinkie Pie. Death Battle. Remember that series? Oh, Death Battle, yes. Can Can you kill the pink? Yep. And, well, apparently them people at the Screw Attack Death Battle place, they decided to make a death battle between Deadpool and Pinkie Pie. And, yeah, hijinks ensue. Have you seen this yet? Oh, five or six times. <laughs> uh, I just had that much fun with it. Yeah. And, spoilers, they both live. They both live, which, of course, Boomstick, the host, is like, What? <laughs> no! No, oh, come on. Now, technically, Deadpool did kill a lot of pinky clones, but they just poof instead of hurt blah. Yeah, it's like almost something equivalent to the Naruto shadow clone uh, ninja tactic. <laughs> but Deadpool discovers the great joy that is chimichurri changas. <laughs> yes, and also discovering another friend to Fort Wall Break. Pickle Bear Kumquat, Pickle Bear Kumquat, chimichurri changa. Uh... Uh, and Death, Deathpool is, Deadpool always is, uh, fun. It's just like, so who's the victim today? Oh, you've gotta be kidding me. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just like this one. I mean, at first I was kind of feeling that, ah, uh, no, I have a strong feeling that Pinky is gonna lose, but, uh, you know what? Pinky does break the fourth wall, so we'll see how it goes. And well, I'm glad. I'm glad they didn't try to go for the death and death battle this time. Yeah. This is not, I mean, uh, what was it? One of my favorites, Chuck Norris versus Sega Tassanjiro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they just keep on They're, fighting. They just keep on fighting. I mean, it's just pure, the, the masculine testosterone is never ending. <laughs> they're still going, but they're beyond our reach yeah. for eternity. Yeah, and... The best part is Segata Sanshiro is just insane. He can, what did they say, kick a rock or whatever it is? And Chuck Norris is, you know, whatever it is, he, he does everything. Chuck Norris is still fighting even at his retired age. Yep. <laughs> Chuck Norris also. Segata Sanshiro! Yeah. Oh man, Segata Sanshiro is also cool too. Uh, it's one of those things. And I do like how Pinkie Pie and Deadpool here just jump into other death battle series and mess things up. <laughs> mess things up. I mean, poor Pinkie, she just want to play that arcade game. Oh. Uh, but still, that's the death battle. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Just go watch it now. Silver enjoys it. I enjoy it. So it's a recommendation by both of us. Watch it while having a uh, cherry changa. A uh, chimichurri changa. Have you eaten one of those? Nope. Chimichurri or cherry changa? Chimichurri or cherry changa? Chimichurri uh, or cherry changa? Uh, no. Uh, but anywho, that's the news for this week. So, I, I don't know what to say. Thank you, Silver, for coming on. Oh, thank you for having me. Let, we're about to close out 2016. Let's try harder next year. Yeah, let's try and do the things we do, but even better. <laughs> Happier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we'll do things better. Like, we have done good. So, let's try to... Put a positive smile in 2017. Make everything feel good and dandy. Let's put a smile on that face. Oh, God. No, not when you say it like that. No. Ah, you gotta get just the right gravel in your voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But 2017, what's your expectation for it? Like, anything you're excited to see? I think seeing how my own career will evolve, see if I can get more videos done. On the national scale, I don't know. The future is very clouded. And my hope is that people will calm down. But at the same time, I, I don't want to bring, get into politics, but I'm, I'm very uncertain on that front. I hope for the best, but be realistic in what could happen. Yeah. I mean, in the future with the guy controlling the, your country, it's, well, let's just wait and see. I mean, the first two years are going to be rough, but hey, he has people backing him up. So, yeah, it'll be all good. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to go buy some liquor right now. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. But on the entertainment front, I do believe that the Incredibles 2 is coming out next year. 
Yes, and a very strangely promote Cars 3. Hmm, okay. Cars 3. Um... The trailer for it is very, very different. The trailer's out? Really? It's just a teaser trailer, but it's it's fascinating to watch because it conjures at least one idea in my head that is unexpected. Do I share? Okay, uh, the trailer, the teaser trailer is cars on a racetrack and someone says, oh, McQueen's doing this. And then you hear Lightning McQueen's heavy breathing as a car that looks like him is flipping with tires shredding and debris everywhere. However, the car itself looks more like a real-life NASCAR. And so I thought, so hang on, are they going to try and pitch it that the Cars 1 and 2 were some sort of dream or or coma delusion of a of an actual racer? Human racer? Wouldn't that be something? Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> I have... That'll... that'll That'll retcon the first two, but but this is just reaction to a early trailer, and I I have no idea how they're going to go with this. True. Oh, also Spider Man Homecoming. Ah, Spider Man re re reboot. <laughs> I think this is the reboot that everybody wants. The good reboot. It's not the reboot we deserve, but it's the reboot we need. Yes. Or is it the other way around? I don't I forget. know. As long as Marvel is touching this, it's all good. Well, at least he'll be with Iron Man and others. Yeah, that would be so cool. I can't wait. In terms of gaming this year, um, the two legendary games that never came out is out, which is uh, The Last Guardian and Final Fantasy XV. So those two are out finally. So yay. One's getting a general reaction of meh. The other one's getting, oh my god, they're such pretty boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Although I finally can pursue a game I've been having my eye on. Oh, was it? Ark Survival Evolved. Oh, isn't that the dinosaur shooty game? It is, but due to legal brouhaha's, they've not been able to release it on the PlayStation until this, uh, the tail end of this month. It's out now. Oh, huh, really? You know, any reason why? A rival company claimed that they were infringing on trade secrets because one of the developers used to work on one of their games. However, the genres are two completely different avenues, venues, I should say. That is just strange. Huh. Well, this is what I mean. 2016 is the year of host- hostility. Everyone seems angry at one another, and we're all taking cheap shots. That's why I say my hope for the future is people will bond over what they share more than what they disagree on. But it's hard to know. Yeah, true that. And even with this tail end of 2016, uh, it is revealed that one of the Overwatch characters, Tracer, may be into girls. <laughs> Really, first they have her her tush scandal, and now she's into the ladies. Yes, with the web comic, <laughs> uh, it is re- even further controversy for the tracer. I know, but you know what? I think that Blizzard says, <laughs> "Let's see how this goes." Like, do you, do you have that moment when you upload something or when you see something and it's na- it it clicks to you saying that, "Oh my god, there's going to be a storm coming." Let's wait and see. <laughs> I don't really approach it with that tone of glee. It's like, ah, oh, they're really going to be mad about this. But think about it. Like, with Blizzard here, I, when I saw that webcomic, I thought like, oh, people are going to go so mad. <laughs> You're mad, brah? Yeah. You're mad, brah, yeah? And all of the things I've seen online, people <laughs> are mad, like... It's just a game character. You're playing the game. Just play the game. Well, now it's going to be... Maybe they'll throw in some lines. Hey, Widow, you're looking fine. Yeah. Have you seen the art online? Why not, right? (laughs) Hey, hey, May, why you got to be cold as ice? (laughs) Uh, Uh, You know what? We've been on for a bit. Like, oi. (laughs) If you guys have any questions, concerns, especially concerns or suggestions, that will work too. For the show, you can contact us at mbsshowgmail.com. You can also catch us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. My Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And Silver, where can the people reach you? Well, you can find me on the YouTubes. Just do a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact. Uh, I'm also on DeviantArt, MLP, hyphen Silver, hyphen Quill. And on the Twitters at MLP Silver Quill. Uh, all right, all right. I was not very original with my naming conventions. It's all cool. I'll put that in the show notes. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvilleLive.com. Also catch our newest endeavor, the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. 
available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, me, Silver, and Sapphire talk about the comics and episodes and just blabber on about stuff. Ever wanted to see a different side of Silver? It's on that show. Ain't that right, Silver? I am troubling. <laughs> yes. Uh, and Sapphire is scared most of the time. I don't know why. Mostly because I keep threatening to make her watch Indiana Jones, as if that's a punishment. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, may- maybe Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I watched that in theaters, really, and... I, I, yeah. My mind went to the space between spaces. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I, I think that um, ant part where that bad guy got eaten up by the ants was freaky, but in all honesty, it's like, eh, eh. Eh? Yeah, it's just, eh. But, yeah. <laughs> but any... Yeah, see? <laughs> uh, I, I don't think there's a mobster movie out yet for 2017, is there? Oh, maybe they can have a Star Wars mob. Yeah, Skywalker, we got a really big racket here, Shay. You get that lightsaber out of here, Shay. Isn't that yeah. Boba Fett? Sorry, not Boba Fett. Yeah, Boba Fett. Is Watch that... out, we've got a bunch of blind guys with sticks. We know that's your one weakness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, oh, I'm thinking something else. Like, uh, who was that guy, the big worm guy? Oh, Java the Hutt? Yeah, Java. Isn't the Java a kind of mobster? He's a gangster, but he's a very different. I'm looking for someone just to have those absurd accents. Oh, Bugsy kind of thing. That's only if uh, George Lucas gets back in charge. Uh, yeah. Nah. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I am Cecilia the Quill. We'll guys catch you next year with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Adios.